In this three-part tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to create a chain link fence, starting from the modeling and UV in Maya to create a modular mesh, a chain link fence that we can connect together and create a series of defense. Then I'm going to show you how to quickly UV it. Then in part two, we'll export it for substance, bring that over into substance and texture it and export all the textures. And then in part three, I'll show you how to export for Unreal Engine 5, then bring in all the textures from Substance Painter, create a material, and have a modular ready to go chain link fence. So in this first part, we're going to model and UV the fence. Here I have a scene open and already set up for scale. So a few things that I always have my Maya template scene file created is a dimension for a scale reference, a size of a human character. This is Unreal Engine Mannequin that was exported from Unreal Engine. And I use this mesh to bring it in in order to judge scale for how big to create things. Also off to the side, I have a human box reference to the same size as a human reference scale for the human character for the mannequin. And I, I use them both to kind of help me judge proportion, scale, and dimensions. I have both of them locked onto their own layer, so that way I won't be able to select them, but they'll be in the scene. So that way, whenever we create our fence or whatever mesh you're creating, I can judge my scale. I also have my grid set up in Maya. Here are my settings. On the display grid options, here's what I currently have it set as. And uh, three values are right here on the length and width, grid lines every 10 units and subdivision set to one. I have a more in-depth tutorial of explaining all these settings if you need to go over it. In addition to that, of course, I have photo references collected for the chain link fence. So I know how big to create it and how it should look. So here's what we are going for, something like this. Let's go ahead and block out the dimensions first before we begin to create. Again, this is going to be very quick. There's not much to this fence to create. It's a cylindrical shape on one side. And then we have, we're going to have a flat plane and another cylinder that's going to be going horizontal. So we're going to create two pieces of geometry. So that way we have one part of the fence that we can duplicate over and over again as a modular piece. And then like an end post that we can close it off. But first, before we begin to create it, I need a scale for how big to make things. So I'm going to create a cube and just start punching the numbers into the inputs for how big uh, the overall fence need to be. So let's say width, uh, let's go ahead and do 100 and let's do height at, uh, let's try 120 and let's do depth at 10. I'm going to modify my pivot point to a bottom vertex so I can snap it on top of the grid. So I'm going to hold down D, V, middle mouse click and drag to the a bottom vertex and then hold down X, middle mouse click and drag so I can position it on top of the grid. All right, so the width of this needs to be way bigger than it is. So let's go ahead and do width at 180. So that's going to be about six feet, just like the character. I think that's pretty good. Let me just make the depth smaller to five. Let's go ahead and modify the pivot point again. Hold D, V, middle mouse click and drag to a bottom vertex and then snap it. And I'm going to position this pivot point at its pivot point in the world origin. And just see, compare it to my scale reference, see how big that looks. Let me move it closer. So I'm going to just uh, disable my scale human and just move it over right next to the fence. Let's lock it back up. And I think that's pretty good height and pretty good width. So I can now just maybe move this somewhere a little bit further back. Basically, I'm going to leave this here. So that way, when we create the fence, it's going to give me a template to create things too in terms of size and dimensions. And the reason that I use these values right here is because that's going to be the width of the fence. And I use whole values because I want to make sure that I've snapped to the grid. So this is going to be a modular fence. So that means I need to contain and maintain this fence within a certain size width in order for me to snap those pieces together. So that's why I used whole values here. And because my grid is set up to match Unreal Engine 5, these grid settings are going to also work in UE5. So let me go ahead and select this and create a new layer and assign the selected object onto it. This fourth icon will do that. And I'm just going to name, rename this to template and save it. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and put it to T uh, as template. So that way I can select it and it's gonna be a wireframe version of it. So it doesn't get into our view. Now let's go ahead and create where the chain link part of the fence will go. And for this, we're gonna use a flat plane. The reason I'm using a flat plane, of course, is because we're gonna create a texture that's gonna give us the opacity, see through, and where the chain link will be. We're not actually going to model the chain link fence. That's just gonna take way too many triangles. It's gonna be way too dense. And one of the common ways to create something see-through is to use a texture with an alpha that will define which parts are gonna be see-through and which parts are going to be solid as opaque. So for that, it's just a single plane. So I'm gonna resize this plane to the same dimensions to fit our scale uh, reference, our template. So width is going to be 180, height 120, subdivision width and height both set to one. And I'm gonna rotate this. Hit R, I'm gonna hold on J to rotate snap. Then I'm gonna modify my pivot point to a bottom vertex. Hold D, V, middle mouse click. And then I'm just gonna snap this, hold X, middle mouse click and just snap it right into the world origin at its pivot point. All right, so that's gonna be our chain link area. Next, we need a post, and we need one post that's going to be horizontal. So one vertical and one horizontal. And then we're gonna take one, once we model the one that's going to be vertical, uh, and once we UV it, we'll duplicate it for the other side. So I'm gonna create a cylinder for this, and start entering values for this. I'm gonna come over here into the inputs. So subdivision axes, for the one that's going to be vertical, let's do 24. So it's a little bit more rounded. For height, let's do uh, 120. But it's probably gonna need to be a little bit taller because uh, it needs to be taller probably than 120 because uh, the post is slightly taller than the, where the chain link fences will be. And for radius, uh, let's do five. Five is way too big. But let me go ahead and put this on top of the grid. So I'm gonna again modify my pivot point, hold D, V, snap it to the bottom vertex and hold X, middle mouse click and drag, snap it on top of the grid. And we need to have this, and I'll eventually do this, not, not yet. This cylinder needs to be over here, so that way it's inside that template. So it's within the boundaries of what we defined as 180. But right now I'm not worried about that yet, and I just wanna see how thick this cylinder needs to be. I think five might be too big. Again, I'm, gonna com I'm comparing this to my scale reference, my mannequin. And let's go ahead and uh, lower this to four. And I think that's gonna be pretty good. Let's make it taller. Go 130, just move it up and see how big it needs to be. I think that's pretty good right there. So when it comes to modularity, I only care about being modular horizontally, meaning that we're gonna be able to duplicate left to right. So I'm not, we're not gonna be stacking this top to bottom or front to back. It's always gonna be uh, left to right. So I think width-wise, I think four should be pretty good. So if I go down to three, that might be too small. So let's go four, that's where we're gonna stay at. Let me modify the pivot point and make sure it's on top of the grid. Hold D, V, modify the pivot point again. Middle mouse click and drag. So your modification pivots and adjusting that pivot point and placing it on top of the grid is extremely important. Not just for modular geometry, but just for regular geometry creation. It should be second nature. And I'm gonna go ahead and hold on X, middle mouse click and drag, so it snaps on top of the grid. And now I wanna go ahead and make sure that this is inside my template. So basically it's gonna be right here within the 180 boundary that of the template we created. So that means I need to modify my pivot point to be right in that corner vertex so I can snap at its pivot point right there in the world origin or on the grid. So again, I'm gonna modify my pivot point once more. Hold D. V, middle mouse, middle mouse click and drag right there, and then hold X so it snaps to the grid. Eventually we'll need to modify our plane so it's inside, being hidden inside the cylinder, but uh, not yet. I'm not too worried about it just at the moment. Then let's create another cylinder that's gonna go across. So usually there is another bar, a metal bar that's going across horizontally. So let me create another cylinder. For this cylinder, because it's gonna be a smaller piece, I am going to set my Subdivision axis to 16. I'm gonna raise this up. And for this one, I'm actually going to scale and then hit R and rotate snap. Hold J to rotate snap, rotate it. And uh, I'm gonna just scale this freely until I get the size I want. 
and just lower this to intersect this. So basically it's gonna prevent from uh, the player having to see this uh, as a very thin plane. So it's gonna basically just sit on top like so. And I think that's pretty good size. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So I'm looking for, uh, for thickness right now of this uh, cylinder. And I think that's pretty good. So I can go ahead and overlap this. As long as it's inside the geometry like so, that should be fine. Then I'm gonna switch over to vertex component mode and I'm just gonna drag this all the way to the other side or right about there. And uh, let's make it slightly bigger, just a little bit. And because I'm making it bigger and I'm scaling it, I need to modify. Let's do this in front view. I'm just gonna uh, bring those verts a little closer in. And I'm gonna isolate select because I need to delete the faces that are not going to be seen. So control one to isolate the selected object. And let's delete these faces since I, I won't be seeing them. So to make a quick selection, I'm gonna select the ones on the inside that I want to keep. Then I'm gonna hold down shift, left click, hold and drag to invert my selection. So only the caps are now selected. And I'm gonna hit delete. Control one to bring everything back. And those faces, uh, the poles on, this, on each side are gone, the caps. So that just saves a few triangles and I don't have to worry about UVing them. And let's model this piece right here. So also, let's go ahead and delete these faces in the bottom. We will never see them and I will not have this fence laying on the ground. So I don't need those faces, so I can go ahead and delete them. I'm gonna hold tab to paint the selection and hit delete. And I missed one face, let's select it, delete that one. And for the top, uh, we just need to create a bit of geometry right here. Usually there's like a metal cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Model and Toolkit and use Multi-Cut. Hold Control, let's do a left click to insert an, an edge, a loop. I'm gonna select these faces right here. I'm gonna hit Control E to extrude, give a bit of thickness and a bit of an offset. And let me come to the side. Actually, maybe a little bit less of an offset, a bit more, less of a thickness, like so. And I'm gonna switch over to Vertex Component Mode, select the top birds, and just raise them up, like so. And then we need a bit uh, more of a, like a rounded shape at the top. So for this, let's see, uh, I'll probably just do, um, maybe select these birds right here and bevel them. Control B to bevel. Then select these edges and just maybe drag them down. Select these edges. I'm double clicking on an edge to select the entire edge loop and just lower that. Let's take a look at the side. And that's something, that's something what I'm going for like so. And maybe, uh, let me see, I'm gonna double click on this one. Maybe lower this. So usually at the top right here, I don't want that vert to be at the very top. I wanna have a more rounded shape. So maybe uh, before I lower this, Right now it's a flat plane. I'm gonna select all of these edges. Hold tab to paint the selection. And I'm just gonna fix it. So I'm gonna remove them first. Control delete to remove those edges. And I'm gonna use uh, multi-cut and just reconnect them up. So basically I'm removing the pole at the top. Not that nothing bad will happen if you leave it, but I just wanna have a more even geometry here at the top that's been connected like so just to remove the pole. A few more. So I'm basically just keeping it as all quads, nice and clean. And then maybe I can go ahead and maybe raise this up and have a more rounded, so it's not flat. So to do this, uh, let's see, I'm gonna select these four faces and I'm gonna hit B, B for like as in big, this will give me soft selection. Then I'm gonna hold down B, left click and drag to uh, lower my area of influence. So self selection allows me to select a set of faces and then with the radius, there's gonna be a fall off effect of all the faces that it affects from my selection. And I can go ahead and maybe raise these up and create more of a rounded top rather than trying to do this with some other way, like manually one face or one vertex at a time. Let me go ahead and maybe increase my area of influence and just raise that up. And let me do a little bit more. Let me take a look at the top view or side view, like so. Let's do a little bit more. I don't want to go too far where it's beginning to affect the 
faces right here, I want to keep that flat. And I think that should be pretty good. Let me hit Alt-5 to remove wireframe and shade it. And that's, I think that's good enough. And let me fix a few issues here. So one, I'm going to go ahead and hit B to remove my soft selection to go back to regular component mode. I'm going to double click on this edge and let's do a bubble. And let's do a smaller fraction. Actually, let's go ahead and do two segments with a higher fraction so it's more rounded. And that just gives me a little better look on the bottom. And for this one, um, I think this is a hard edge. So in Maya, you have hard and soft edges. And let me see if this will look better with a soft edge. So I'm going to switch over to edge component mode, select this edge, and go to mesh display and soften edge. And that looks much better. I can hold down shift, right click, hold, and go to soften hard edges and toggle soft edge display. That will just show me dashed lines. And dashed lines means it is a soft edge. Here's another hard edge. Let's go ahead and turn that into a soft edge. Solid line is a hard edge. Dashed line is a soft edge. So that should soften everything out. Let's go ahead and disable. Shift, right click, hold, soften, and toggle soft edge display. And that looks much better. All right, let's bring back wireframe, Alt-5. And I'm just going to take this, I'm going to duplicate it for the other side, just to see how far I need to uh, control my plane, because it's going to show through on this side right here. You can kind of see it, it's poking through my geometry. And see what else I need to kind of adjust. So as far as the fence, here's what we're going to have. We're going to have this right here, this object, as one mesh. And then we're going to have another copy of this pole on the other side. So that way, when we bring into Unreal Engine 5, we'll have two pieces of geometry. One that's going to be the fence that could be duplicated like so over and over and over again. And then whenever we need to cap it off and close it on the other side, we'll have one pole and we'll just bring it in. And that's going to be the end whenever we are done putting the fence. So I'm going to delete this. So basically, I just need to make a copy of this. Control D move it over here and it has to be within our template. So I'm going to modify the pivot point DV right here in the corner and then hold X and just left click and drag. So it snaps right there. So it's within our boundaries of the template. And now I'm going to come into the side view or front view, switch over to vertex and just ad adjust our plane. So that needs to be inside our geometry. And let's select these two verts and uh, push them over. And for this bar right here, it's already inside the cylindrical piece on the left. Let's go ahead and select these vertices and just bring them a little bit closer, like so. Let's see if uh, that's looking good. Yep, that is good. And everything's good on the other side as well. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because I want to UV this piece. And then once we UV it, I'll copy it to the other side because I don't want to have to UV two pieces. So as far as the modeling process right here, that's it. That's all we're going to do. So our next step is taking this and UV in it. All right, let's UV this one at a time. It's still all separate, so it should make it easier for us. I'm going to select this cylindrical piece, the pole. Let's go to UV, UV editor, and here are the default UVs. Actually, let me open up uh, the workspace, UV editing workspace. So easiest way to UV cylindrical pieces like this is I'm going to add an object level. I'm going to go to create planar options, and I'm going to project this on Z, the Z axis, the blue arrow, and I'm going to project it. So that will project all the faces in the shape. Then I need to make cuts where I would want a UV seam, a uh, texture seam. So I'm going to go to edge component mode and select where that texture seam is going to be. So uh, it doesn't really matter at the moment. Uh, usually it could be in the back, could be on the side. Uh, there's usually a texture seam somewhere. So I'm going to select one in the back. So it's going to be this edge right here. Let's select this edge going all the way up these two, uh, three edges. And let's go all the way up to this edge right here. And then in the UV editor, I'm going to hold down shift. Actually, let's just go to cut and sew and cut. So that's going to make a cut across where I had those edges selected. At the moment, I have 
under view texture board is enabled so that shows wherever there is a cut being made a seam will appear the texture border is enabled so it's easy for me to see where i made those cuts if you don't have that it's very difficult to tell have to enable this and then i'm going to make a cut and let's let's go ahead and actually separate um, right here so i'm going to double click on this edge and then hold shift and just continue double clicking so we're gonna make a cut of this piece at the top and we're just gonna peel that off so it's gonna be a separate uv shell so with all those edges selected i'm gonna hold down uh, i'll just go to modify cut and sew and cut so those faces are now separate uv shells so i'm gonna switch over to uv shell and then you saw uv editor and let's drag this off and here are my two uv shells so for the faces that are being on top let's go ahead and reproject them so they're top down i'm gonna select the faces which are just those faces at the top and let's project them on y let's go to create planar options and let's do y projection we'll deal with uh, the size of this in a minute i'll just scale it down for a second and just position it right next to it and then for this piece which is our second uv shell i'm going to select the uvs and then i'm going to go to modify unfold options and let's take a look at unfold 3d once i made that uv seam with that you cut in the back which is right there that should unfold pretty straight and give me a good uv shell so let's go ahead and select those uvs and apply perfect that's exactly what i wanted and i want to make this shell straight so i'll just go to a single edge select that edge go to modify and orient shells to edges and that's a perfectly nice shell straight shell I'm going to select uh, the UV shell for this. And eventually it's going to be positioned inside my 0 to 1 space, which is right here. Then let's go ahead and UV the cylinder. I'm going to do the same thing. I like using this method. But of course, there is a uh, under create, there is a cylindrical projection you can use. And that's all this cylinder is right here. It's just a cylinder without any side caps. So this should be very simple to do. I'll just reproject it. I'll select that object level, go to create planar. I'm gonna project this on Z, which is uh, the blue arrow. Understanding what the X, Y, Z axes mean makes it super easy to project on a specific axis. So if you know which projection direction you are making your meshes and understanding the arrows, how they're pointing, their color, choosing X, Y, Z in the projection method becomes extremely simple. So I projected it, now I just need to make a cut it's going to be just a single edge so i'm going to select an edge in the bottom cut and sew cut it select the uvs modify and unfold and i'm going to do the same thing where i select one single edge modify and orient shells to edges done and i'm not even using the checker map to check but i can go to texture use checker map zoom in closer uh, let's make the shell a little bit bigger so i can see how the density of it falls so that it came out pretty good but this is a simple object to uv so i'm not even using the checker map once you get really good at uvs and you know what they should look like uh, you don't even need to check your checker map and so on you just know based on the shell size and then we have one more which is this right here actually for this one i do want to check my checker map so that one's perfect because it's a flat plane and we didn't really do much to it other than resized it so it kept perfectly clean uv without any distortion so all i need to do is just take all these pieces that we have we only have uh, one two three we have three objects and four shells and just position them inside zero to one space so i'm going to do this manually i'm just simply going to first to make sure that all of these shells match in textile density so i'm going to select the uvs for this piece right here and I'm going to make it slightly smaller just a little bit so it's inside 0 to 1 space give it a little bit of padding on the, on the sides right here and then I'm going to get my textile density because I want to match everything else to this UV shell in terms of the size so I've selected all the UVs and I'm going to go to transform under textile density I'm going to click get that's going to give me a number and that's the textile density I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to set to everything else. So now I'm going to select this shell and I'm going to click set. That's going to make it lower. 
gonna select this shell, click set. So now it matches. I'm gonna select this shell and click set. And now I'm gonna position all these shells inside zero to one space. For this shell, I'm gonna rotate. So I'm gonna select all the UVs. And inside on the transform tools, you have rotation at 90 degrees. I'm gonna rotate it, position it right there. Select this shell and just position it right there. And now they all match. So the texture that will be applied, there's not gonna be any distortion between each UV shell. So the textile density is incredibly important. So all the texture resolution matches between each UV shell. And because I have a little bit of space, I could just take these shells right here and just scale them slightly. That slight distortion in, in increased size of the textile density for those shells will not matter because uh, it's just a small amount. And that's it, that's our UV layout. Again, it's inside zero to one space. Even though you have all this grid right here, uh, you, you can only use zero to one. Uh, we're gonna have unique UVs. And I am not utilizing tile and textures for this. So I'm keeping everything inside zero to one space. And as far as the UVs go, we are done. Let's go ahead and go to UV editing and back to actually uh, workspace to general away from UV editing. So now I'm gonna take this shell right here, or uh, not shell, uh, this uh, pole, and I'm gonna duplicate it. Control D. I'm gonna duplicate it, and that's gonna I'm gonna use this for the other side. So we're gonna have again two objects, and then I need to modify my pivot point. Uh, actually, let me modify this pivot point to the center of the object, because what I want to do is maybe slowly rotate this pole, because. Inside the UV editor, let me just show you really quick. Because I duplicated this object for this one, it's going to use the same texture. So these two shells are overlapping on top of each other. However, in terms of their position inside the world, they're going to be exactly the same. So if I place some kind of dirt or something else on top of one texture, it's gonna show up on the other pole, on the other piece of geometry. But if I rotate the piece of geometry slightly, in maybe 45 degrees or something, whatever texture that will be applied on one side is not gonna face the same direction. So a really quick trick I could do is just simply take this and uh, first, because my pivot point is right there, I'll just modify to the center first. And then I can maybe take this, hold J, uh, rotate like so. And now once I've rotated it, let's go ahead and modify my pivot point to uh, this right here, to this uh, corner vertex, hold D, V, middle mouse click and drag, and now I can hold X and snap it inside my template. So it's gonna be within the boundaries of our template we created. Let's go ahead and take these three pieces right here, because it's gonna be one object, and combine them. So, so let's go to modify. It's actually uh, not modify, uh, mesh, combine. So it's one mesh now. And now before I do anything else, let's go, uh, since whenever you combine, the pivot point will be off in space, or actually not off in space, but it'll be in the center of those meshes. And I'm gonna go ahead and modify it to a corner of this mesh right here. Hold D, V, middle mouse click and drag, and change my pivot point back. Always control your pivot points. And it happens to be in the world origin as well. That's important because we're gonna be exporting from the world origin at its pivot point to Unreal Engine 5 as well as into Substance. So, and it happens to be in the world origin already. Perfect. I'm gonna go to channel box and let's delete history. Let's rename this. So this is going to be chain link fence. And then let's do something with this. And again, that piece of geometry, that's gonna be our second one. So let's rename it right away. Let's, uh, this is gonna be chain link fence post. And I wanna go ahead and modify my pivot point. And actually we're gonna just take, uh, keep the pivot point right there. And whenever we export, I like to freeze my transformations, meaning I like to clear out the translate and rotate to zero at its world origin. So whenever I move this mesh, I can always bring it back for export. So I'm gonna take at its pivot point, I'm gonna hold down X, middle mouse click and drag, position this pole at its pivot point right there add the world origin, and then I'm gonna freeze my transformations by going to modify and freeze transformations. I have it on my custom tool shelf. So I have 
the most important functions that I constantly use on my tool shelf. So now my transformations are zeroed out. So I can go ahead and uh, I can snap this back to where it needs to be. But then when I export for Unreal Engine 4, I can just type in zero and it doesn't have to be right there. It could be anywhere in the world. If I type in zero right here, bam, it's back for me to export. And then in Maya, I can position it really quick just to check or do whatever I need to, with, to do with it. But then when I export for Unreal, it has to be exported at World Origin at its pivot point. Well, it doesn't have to be, but you're going to find that if you export it from this place, then the pivot point will be positioned right here while the mesh is in the same location. So it's going to, it's harder to work with it. All right. So that's it. The modeling process is done. We have two pieces. We have UV'd. Everything is inside zero to one space. And our next step is to texture this. So in part two, we're going to export this for substance. We're going to bring it into substance. We're going to look for chain link material because one doesn't exist in the current version of substance painter, but you can download one from their marketplace and we're going to texture this and then we're going to export textures so we can use them in Unreal Engine 5. So that's going to be in the next part. And then part three, we'll bring this into Unreal Engine 5, connect all the textures and have a nice looking chain link fence.